Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Kaylee and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about what it's like to have gay parents. So in my last video, which I will link here, I um, talked about how I was a sperm donation. So I don't know who my father is because I have two lesbian parents. So that video got a lot, I got a lot of questions from that video about what it's like to have parents that are gay, what it's like to grow up um, in society with gay parents and things like that. So I thought I'd just make a separate video on it just to help people out. Um, I wanted to just preface this and say that like I'm going to say some negative things about my experience, but that doesn't mean that I mean that everyone's going to have a bad experience. I do think that gay parents have more than just right, just right, right, or just all right in having kids. And I think that in any kind of family situation, there will be dysfunctional problems. So no matter what that family is comprised of and how eclectic it is, I think everybody is susceptible, is susceptible to having family drama, family problems, things like that. So I thought I would just point out things that I think were different for me than other, like my friends that I knew. So um, I'm just going to start with how since I was... Um, I have two moms, so I never was really around a lot of grown men. So for me, um, when my grandfather came over for, to visit, for instance, I felt very weird hugging him or like giving him any kind of like physical attention. And I think that's just because it's like a foreign person like that you've never seen before. Um, I, I felt that way throughout my childhood up until my late teens about men, um, just older men, kids my own age. I had no problem with boys my own age. Um, I don't know, maybe because they were my equals or something. But when it came to older men, I was definitely like nervous and scared of them, pretty much. Because if you <laughs> coming from a place where you don't know any grown men really, um, besides like family friends that would visit for maybe ten minutes, that I was also very uncomfortable around. Um, every time you turn on the news, guess who's doing a crime? A guy. So I was just kind of traumatized because I thought that, you know, men were dangerous, and that was something that I, I felt like when I was growing up, so. Another thing that I just wanted to bring up was um, how the doctor treated me. Um, my doctor was the one who was with my mom throughout the entire pregnancy. She was the one that delivered me. Um, so she was very, like, gay-friendly. Um, but she did, she was quite ignorant, I feel like. Um, after I was about 12 or 13, I'd get physical exams every year from her, and every year she pretty much asked me if I was gay. Um, and I think it was more like a, a case study thing. Like, I think in the scientific community, there's still, like, that, uh, I kind of feel like a case study, like, to be honest, because I feel like doctors and scientists and things like that try to draw, like, a parallel between, um, relation and the tendency to be gay so they were looking I think she was just curious whether or not it ran in the family if that makes sense um but I feel like that question itself was very um it was rude like if you don't ask 12 or 13 year olds hey are you still straight like that doesn't happen so I felt like I don't know I wouldn't say prejudiced but I felt very awkward in that situation um when it came to school and friends, my parents told me, this was before, like, this was in the early 90s, right? So, uh, up until throughout high school. In my um, high school and, and elementary school, a lot of people, like, a lot of kids, their favorite things to say is, oh, that's so gay. Like, everything's gay, or you're a fag, or things like that. So, my parents told me that basically not to mention what my family was like. Don't tell people that, like, aren't my very close friends about it. And just what they don't know won't hurt them kind of thing. I mean, obviously, that's damaging because I felt like my family wasn't normal and that it was something to hide. Um, I have no advice on this subject. I'm Like I just said, I'm just telling you how it was for me, pretty much. Um, so what happened with friends was basically... I wouldn't tell my friends until it came to the point where they'd have to sleep over at my house and then I'd have to explain it to them. None of my friends had a problem with it, just saying, like, kids don't have problems with this, um, especially if they're already your friend, like, they're probably not 
they probably don't care. Especially, I think now would be less of a big deal. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was just, I, and I hoped, I secretly hoped and prayed that they wouldn't spread it around like a dirty secret in class. So I did feel like that, um, when I was young. Uh, throughout high school I didn't tell anyone about it unless, like, they were my very best friends again. Um, to go with how adults and parents reacted, all my parent, all my friends' parents were really progressive and left left wing so it wasn't a big deal um i did know in my childhood i had a cousin that was like my family's best friend's daughter and her father had a problem with the daughter coming over but he like i, I i'm not gonna say that that he's an asshole or anything like that but he pretty much was an asshole and um was just looking at reasons to pick fights but he'd say like oh your parents are gonna molest my daughter like, it just ignorance like that, I, I had, and I heard about it, obviously, so that was kind of messed up. Um, besides that, school and friends and stuff like that, um, when it just came to, like, family dynamics, I'm just going to make it more of a light, light topic now, um, is that my, my moms aren't very feminine, I guess, if you, they don't wear makeup, they would never wear dresses, they would never you know, do their hair before they left the house kind of thing like that. I mean, to a certain extent, like, it'd be brushed, but, like, they didn't know how to do anything more than, like, a basic braid kind of thing. So I always kind of missed that, like, having a mom that would be able to teach me, like, how to put on makeup, um, somebody who I could go through, like, their jewelry box or, you know, take style tips from or um, have somebody that would be able to French braid the back of my head like other girls had. Um, but... Yeah, I pretty much had to learn that all myself. Um, in grade 8, I went to school with, like, blue eyeshadow up to my eyebrow because I did <laughs> no one was there to teach me, you know? So, uh, and this is before YouTube, so I had no, no uh, good tutorials. Um, but overall, was my, would I do it again? Like, if I could be in a straight family, would I do it? Like, if I could choose a straight family or my family, I'd still pick my family because they're still my family, right? Um, oh, and another thing that I wanted to bring up was I didn't have a dad to ask for money. Like, if any daughters know this, like, you could ask your mom, she'll say no, and then you can go beg your dad and he'll probably give you money like daddy's little girl kind of thing. I never had that, so <laughs> uh, never had any of that dynamic in my family. It's kind of just, like, two moms, so... <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I just wanted to say that beyond that, that was my life experience. Um, if you're gay watching this, go and have a kid, man. Like, there's there's something that's always going to be in the way of your decision, and there's always going to be obstacles, but I'm pretty sure you've lived your life up until now, so you are aware of that. So that's pretty much it for the video, guys. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask me. I'd be happy to answer. Again, this was just my personal experience. Everybody, I think, deserves to be able to have children and a family, no matter what their situation, sexual orientation, what have you, financial situation, things like that. Don't let anyone stop you because of their prejudices. And again, this is just my personal opinion. So I just wanted to, I guess, be the case study that the doctor always wanted and tell you guys what it was like for me. I hope I see you in the next video, and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Yada yada. Bye. Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Kaylee, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be telling you about a crazy Tinder date that I had uh, that involved dead people. So, interesting. Buckle up. Here we go. Uh, pretty much what happened was I uh, met